Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahawa, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha HaKurash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to get into a topic uh, that a uh, brother asked me to expound on from a statement I made that uh, it is through King Solomon's, you know, disobedience that we are in the very captivity that we are in today, you know, which ultimately stems from a series of captivities that were promised <laughs> or prophesied rather through a vision given to Daniel, okay, of four beasts. We always talk about that and how ultimately the first one, when you read Daniel 7 and 4, was ultimately the Assyrian Babylonian Empire. Okay, from there you have the Medes and the Persians, from there you have the Greeks, and from there you have the Romans, which were in power when Yahweh Shai was born, you know, as Jerusalem, Judea, was subject to the Roman authority and rule, which is why you had all of those, you know, wars and friction with the Zealots and, you know, disobeying the uh, Roman authority, the taxes and all of that, you know, which eventually led to 70 AD, you know, where we were uh, kicked out of Jerusalem and had to flee you know, as we'll show you in um, scripture, Yahweh Shai even prophesied of 70 AD. And um, from there, you know, eventually we will be brought into our final captivity, which is the revival of Rome. You see? But what we're going to expound on today in this lesson is how King Solomon's disobedience and fall is what led to those captivities, all right, even the captivity that we are in. And when you understand Solomon's rule, you know, after King David and his mighty men subdued the heathen roundabout, all right, that, that enabled Solomon to ultimately have 40 years of peace ruling over both Judah and Israel, okay, the united monarchy the united sovereign kingdom of israel you see this is why you should read the history um you know going into you know the kings the chronicles and so forth um, before that we had judges but ultimately uh, as you see here in first kings the fourth chapter in the 20th verse it talks about solomon's power wealth and wisdom it says, Judah and Israel were many, as the sand which is by the sea in multitude, eating and drinking and making merry. Okay? Now, this was promised to Abraham, all right? But ultimately, we know that at the time of Solomon, it was just a foreshadowing of what was to come under Yahweh Shai. So it wasn't the true fulfilling of it. All right, but it was a figure of what was promised to Abraham, all right, that a particular land, okay, as we'll show you in the book, let's, uh, in Genesis, the uh, 15th chapter, there will be a particular land, okay, which is the promised land that ultimately Israel, okay, the united kingdom of Israel, all right, both Judah and Ephraim, united together and they're going to rule out of that land that's when it's all said and done all right what we saw at the time of king solomon is going to happen but you know from that point you know the kingdom of heaven under yahweh shai we're going to rule the whole world but it starts at jerusalem in the promised land all right which will show you and this is where solomon ruled out of okay when we deal with the promise that was given unto abraham of that particular land okay solomon pretty much reigned 
in that land. This is 1 Kings 4 and 21. So in verse 20 is letting you know Judah and Israel. So the kingdom was united. See, we're living in a time now where the kingdom, you know, of Judah and the kingdom of Israel, all right, are getting back united because we've been separated since, all right, these various different captivities that stem from Solomon's, you know, um, transgression. Okay? So here, Judah and Israel, you know, for the 40 years, all right, Whereas the sand, which is by the sea in multitude, eating and drinking and making merry, winning. And Solomon reigned over all the kingdoms from the river unto the land of the Philistines, unto the border of Egypt. They brought presents and served Solomon all the days of his life. Okay, now, when you look this up and you do a cross-reference, it's going to take you to Genesis, the 15th chapter. Okay, because this is pretty much the land. All right, Genesis 15 and 18. And the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed I have given this land from the river of Egypt to the great river of Euphrates. All right, the Kenites, and then he, he, he lists all of these particular, you know, um, nations. Okay, but there was a land promised, all right, to Abraham's seed through Isaac and through Jacob, who had 12 sons. Okay. But, um, let's see here. Yeah, and that promise was given unto Isaac, all right, and then Jacob, you know, and this is what David, you know, uh, and Solomon were ultimately um, fulfilling in the sense that David beat down the nations that were in uh, control of the land and ultimately this gave way for King Solomon to reign, all right? Because when you look up Solomon's kingdom, as you can see here, okay? In the red, it's the territory of Israel before David became king. All right, the area conquered by David and inherited by Solomon. All right, and then you had the area under economic influence of Solomon. So when you look at this region, pretty much, it is the uh, same region, all right, that was promised to Abraham. Okay? So Solomon, okay, ultimately um, fulfilled that promise but we know that wasn't the full fulfillment of it because ultimately, as you read, let's get uh, the book of, uh, let's get Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. Let's get Ezekiel 37. Also, the book of Baruch goes into it. Let's see here. The Davidic kingdom, when Yahweh established the throne of David on earth. All right, and David, my servant, shall be king over them, okay? And you can't speak on David without dealing with the, the one promise to be issued forth from his loins, which ultimately will be Yahweh Shai, okay? When you go into the promise and the covenant, you know, the, the, the oath that was made to David, it was that his son... All right, that will come out of his loins will be the one to establish this all. And at the time of David in his life, it was Solomon who established and forwarded his throne for 40 years. All right, but in the kingdom of heaven, okay, it's going to be Yahweh Shai. All right, let's get Luke, the first chapter, real quick. Luke 1 and. 31 and behold thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Yahweh Shai and he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest okay just as Adam and Solomon were known as the son of the highest see because those are all the same spirits and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David 
and he shall reign over the house of Jacob, all right, who is David forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. So going back here, the Davidic kingdom is going to be established by Yahweh Shai. Okay? When you go into the promise, so that David, my servant, shall be king over them, and they all shall have one shepherd, and they shall wa all walk in my uh, judgments and observe my statutes and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant. Okay, which that was a promise that was given unto Abraham first. Okay. And then Isaac and then Jacob. So they shall dwell in that land. That's the land we're going to dwell in in the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so when you when you read about Solomon's reign, all right, that 40 years was a prelude, okay, of course, you know, just a um, smaller version of what's going to happen on an even larger level without sin and Jake being subject to going off, you know, in the kingdom of heaven, all right, and Israel was winning. So when we get the kingdom, we're going to dwell in that land that was given unto Jacob, wherein your fathers have dwelt. Okay, and they shall dwell therein, even they and their children and their children's children. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. Let's get the book of uh, Baruch, the second chapter, so that you can understand this. And then we'll get, you know, into the lesson. But Baruch, the second chapter says, all right, once we return from our stiff neck and our wicked deeds, turn back to the Lord. Okay, it says, verse 34, And I will bring them again into the land which I promised with an oath unto their fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they shall be lords of it, and I will increase them, and they shall not be diminished, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Because once we, when we get, in, when, we, when we return to that land, we're going to be perfect. See, the reason that we were kicked out of that land was because of disobedience. Okay? Starting with Adam, who he was in that land as well. That's the Garden East and Eden, as we'll show you. All right. And then Solomon. All right. It was uh, that's why he's known as the Alpha and he's also the Omega. And we'll show you this in just a minute. It says, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their God and they should be my people. And I will no more drive my people Israel out of the land that I have given them. Okay. So. Us being driven out of this land, all right, that Solomon reigned over, okay, goes back to ultimately um, Solomon, okay, breaking the commandment, okay, so we have the captivity of decay and, you know, the flesh, wicked thoughts and everything that stems from Adam, all right, the son of God, okay, because when you, this is a, the, the, and, you know, Adam, Solomon, Yahawashai, all right, are all known as the son of God, okay, so Solomon here, okay, as a son, as a matter of fact, let's look that up, I have chosen him to be my son, I believe that's in first Chronicles, the 28th chapter. Okay, Solomon was chosen to be his son and to build that temple, all right, that uh, ultimately David gave him the blueprint to build. So, uh, let's see here. Right, boom, here we go. And this is David talking. I started uh, 1 Chronicles 28 and 4. Howbeit the Lord God of Israel chose me before all the house of my father to be king over all Israel. David, right? For, for he hath chosen Judah to be the ruler and the house of Judah and of the house of Judah, the house of my father. And among the sons of my father, he liked me to make me king over all Israel. David, and of all my sons, the Lord hath given me many sons. He have chosen Solomon, my son, to sit upon the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over and of, of Yahweh over Israel. And he said unto me, Solomon, thy son, he shall build my house in my courts. For I have chosen him to be my son 
and I will be his father. Okay? Solomon was the son of the Most High. Okay? Adam was the son of the Most High. All right? That's in the book of Luke. So right here, as the son of the Most High, this was the promise and warning. 1 Kings 9 and 1. And it came to pass when Solomon had finished the building of the house of the Lord. Okay, it took him seven years to build the temple, which the temple represented what? A place where we as the Israelites could offer up a sacrifice, have an altar, and a connection with our power. And that, that, um, that temple, okay, was built upon Mount Moriah, which is ultimately Jerusalem. All right, the same place where uh, Abraham was going to sacrifice Isaac. Okay? So that temple took seven years to complete. Okay? Solomon also had other projects for himself that took 13 years. But, as you can see here, it came to pass when Solomon had finished the building of the house of the Lord and the king's house, all right, and all Solomon's desires, which he pleased to do, that the Lord appeared unto Solomon the second time. The first time he appeared to him, you know, Solomon, you know, um, asked the Lord to give him wisdom, you know, and ultimately because he asked for wisdom instead of riches, the Lord blessed him with wisdom. And through wisdom, he got riches and was able to have his way. Israel was literally, I mean, when you walk through I mean, when you when you read about Solomon's kingdom and empire, all right, it was absolutely dominant. It was impeccable. Gold, just like you walk through the streets and you see rocks and you know, no, it was gold and silver in the in the ground. Solomon was blessed. He knew how to communicate with animals. He was into plants and roots. He had the best woods, the best frankincense. All right. The Queen of Sheba even came to uh, witness it and she was in awe. OK, so here it is the second time, you know, the Lord appeared unto Solomon. As he had appeared unto him at Gibeon and the Lord said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and thy supplication that thou hast made before me. I have allowed this house which thou hast built to put my name there forever. Mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. So we were at one with our power here. It says, and if thou walk before me as David thy father walked. Because one thing we know about David is, yeah, his sins are recorded. But you never heard about David bowing to the idols of the heathen. You never heard of David building high places to Molech and all of these different gods for his concubines and for women. He was he kept his integrity. Yeah, David had concubines of the heathen nations, but David didn't, uh, uh, you know, make covenant and have covenant marriages and all of that stuff with him. Solomon did that, as we'll show you. So he's saying, basically, if they'll walk with me as David, thy father, walked in the integrity of his heart and in uprightness to do according to all I have commanded thee. And will keep my statutes and my judgments. Then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever. As I promised David thy father saying. There shall not fail thee a man. All right. Upon the throne of Israel. So the throne of David is. All right. The kingdom and government. All right. In which the Israelites will reign. All right. How will that happen? We know that's going to happen under who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. We just read that in Luke, right? All right, Solomon did that for 40 years, okay? And to prove, you, uh, you know, Solomon and Yahweh are the same, just read Psalms, the 72nd chapter, all the way through, and you ask yourself, when did Solomon do that? <laughs> and we'll get it if the Spirit permits. I have a lesson on it as well. It says... So let's read this in the NLT. Then I will establish the throne of your dynasty over Israel forever. 
for I made this promise to your father David, one of your descendants will always sit on the throne of Israel, okay, which is the throne of David. But if ye shall at all turn from following me, ye or your children, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them, then will I cut Israel off out of the land which I have given them, and this house which I have hollowed for my name will I cast out of my sight, and Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among all people. And at this house, all right, Jerusalem, the temple, which is very high, Everyone that passeth by it shall be astonished and shall hiss, and they shall say, Why hath Yahweh done this unto this land and to this house? And they shall answer, Because they forsook the Lord their God, who brought them forth, all right, their fathers out of the land, all right, out of Egypt and have taken hold upon other gods, and have worshipped them, and served them, therefore hath the Lord brought upon them all this evil. Right? So you read that. So basically, we will be kicked out of the land. NLT, then I will uproot Israel from this land that I have given them, and I will reject this temple that I have made holy honor to my name. And I will make Israel an object of mockery and ridicule among the nations, right? Now, this is not the first time this happened. Again, as the scriptures say, that which is then is now. All right? Nothing new. What's that? Uh, Ecclesiastes. All right? Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. A thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun right so when did this happen before when when were we first kicked out of this paradise well let's go back to adam which we're not going to go all the way into it but when you read about what happened from adam's transgression because did not adam transgress as well huh king james BibleOnline.org. Let's go to, and what we'll do is we'll keep this up. Let's go to uh, Sirach, or Second Ezra's rather, the third chapter. Okay, speaking of Adam, thou gave us a body to Adam, verse five, without soul, which was the workmanship of thy hand. Thou breathed unto him the breath of life. Led us him into paradise, which is not talking about the spiritual realm, which is at thy right hand had planted, okay, ever before the earth came forward. And unto him gave us thou a commandment to love thy way, which he transgressed. And immediately thou appointest death in him and in his generations of who came nations, tribes, people, and kindreds out of number. All right, the Bible was tracking the, the holy seed, okay, and then eventually the flood came. Okay, and ultimately Noah was the one used to keep that righteous legacy going. And as you keep going, it goes into what? You know, Abraham, who's of that same lineage through Shem, through Arphaxad, which Noah's son was Shem, who had Arphaxad. And that's ultimately the lineage in which Abraham goes through. So the Bible is tracking the Holy Seed, and then it goes into the covenant, all right, made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, so you can go to that, but ultimately, all of the hell that this line has went through started with Adam's fall, which ultimately Eve sinned, all right, but Adam ate of that fruit, that philosophy too, and the sons of God, all right, just as we're getting ready to see Solomon's lineage, all right, went off, but some of them, you know, stuck to the traditions, the same thing happened already through Adam. Okay, so in Genesis, in Genesis, the uh, third chapter, the fall of man, the fall of Adam, 
the fall of the chosen seed, the fall of the sons of God, okay, ultimately ended in what? As you read it, let's see here. I just get to the point. Genesis 3 and 24. Okay, so he drove out the man <laughs> he placed at the east of the garden. The garden east in Eden, all right, was Jerusalem in that region that was ultimately promised to Abraham. We're going to get that garden back, okay, through who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Right? Now, so he drove out the man he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden. All right. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims. Okay. And a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. So ultimately the Lord drove us out of that land. All right. And, you know, that connection we had with him ultimately led to us, you know, being cursed. You know, that that, that connection we had, we, it, you know, ultimately we fell. He kept us from perfection. He kept us from immortality and we had to suffer this great death. Right. So Adam and the sons of God were drove out <laughs> of that land. Right. See what this says in NLT. After sending them out, the Lord God stationed a mighty cherubim, all right, east to the Garden of Eden, and he placed a flaming sword that flashed back and forth to guard the way of the tree of life. So the Lord did not allow us to perfection. Okay? Verse 23 Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So everything that was supposed to be freely given unto us, now we have to work for it. And that's a curse. So the Lord, all right, right, pretty much banished, as you see here. So the Lord God banished them from the Garden of Eden and sent Adam out to cultivate the ground from which he was made. <laughs> all right, we were never supposed to have to work. It was everything was supposed to just be freely given unto us. But ultimately, going back to um, Kings. All right. So here it is. You know, you, you Solomon's ruling just as Adam was ruling. OK. He builds the temple. Builds his palace. You know, the ark is brought to the temple. All right. And then he's given like, look this promise and warning, all right? And again, one of the stipulations is that if you follow after these other gods, just, and that's what Adam did, you know, the, the, starting with Eve, okay? Uh, they, they took on those philosophies, all right? And this is very interesting that it was through women, all right, that Adam fell, and it's through women that Solomon fell. This is why... When Yahweh Shai, okay, uh, you know, ultimately uh, came on the scene as the son of the Most High, obedience, he gave up the life. And we're going to do a lesson on that as well. Lord willing, following this one, this week, I'm going to go into that aspect of it. Okay, and then there's another lesson I want to do going into p the particulars of the kingdom being rent and particularly events that was taken away, you know, at the time of Solomon. Now, again, let's read this again, 1 Kings 9 and 6, but if you shall at all turn from following me, all right, ye or your children, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes, which I have set before you, <laughs> but go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will cut Israel out of the land which I have given them. Okay? And this is that land. The promised land. Where ultimately the Israelites, okay, would uh, rule. And we're going to return to this land. All right? But in the kingdom, it's not going to stop here. 
all right and the kingdom we're going to return to this land for the purpose of inheritance rights all right and then we're going to go throughout the four corners of the earth spreading this knowledge wisdom and understanding enforcing these laws worldwide under Yahweh this is what we're returning to anyway so when you get to it did Solomon sin okay so if you did if he did Israel will be cut out of the land which was given them okay and that was fully fulfilled okay in this fourth beast in the Roman Empire in 70 AD all right we were completely kicked out of the land okay we were completely kicked out of the land all right and Yahweh Shai prophesied of it all right this is the book of Matthew 24 and 1 all right and Yahweh Shai went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came unto him to show him the buildings of the temple. Okay? <laughs> you know, like, look. And that was the temple that was built by Solomon. All right? <laughs> and Yahweh Shai said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, that there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Okay, ultimately, the Lord was going to, uh, you know, ultimately destroy that temple and we would be divorced. You see, he also talks about it here in the book of Luke. Okay. Luke 19 and 42 saying, if thou hast known even thou at, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes and they were denying him being the son of the most high for the day shall come upon thee that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee and shall compass thee round about and keep thee in on every side and shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children with thee and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation all right and then ultimately it goes into the corruption that was going on in the temple Okay, but ultimately it was because of disobedience that started going back to Solomon that all of these things had to happen. He said, if you or your children go off, all right, I'm going to root y'all out of the land. So eventually in 70 AD, all right, which, you know, was the beginning process of that falling away. Let's get 1 Thessalonians. The second chapter. Or Second Thessalonians, the second chapter of Slavia. Yeah. All right. This is the book of Second Thessalonians two and three. Let no man deceive you, because at this time, you know, many people were teaching the resur you know, the resurrection has already passed. People were teaching, look, the kingdom is getting ready to come right now. We're getting ready to receive it. You know rebelling against rome in the form of wars and you know refusing to pay taxes which was totally contrary to what yahweh shai was teaching but anyway and you had many of the you know believers were depressed at this time a lot of the believers thought the kingdom was going to come all right when you even when you get acts the first chapter okay you got to understand what they're asking here all right, Acts 1 and 6, this is before Yahweh Shai, you know, went back to the right-hand side of the Father after his resurrection. You know, he spent 40 days and 40 nights after he resurrected with believers, all right? Uh, um, two women saw him first, which, you know, that's symbolic of, you know, um, Judah and, and Israel. But two women, two Marys saw him first, right? And then ultimately... They went and told, you know, uh, the, the heads of the church, and they saw him. And then eventually, as it says in the book of Acts, he broke bread, all right, with brothers and sisters, all right? He didn't show himself openly to all people, but he showed himself, 
all right, to uh, particulars of the church. And then he's getting ready to be resurrected, you know, brought back to the Father, all right, return back to the right-hand side so he can send down the Holy Spirit. And it says here, they thought that that was it. They thought that, look, Yahweh Shah, you, you resurrected, you know, you hear the, like, you, you look what they ask. When they were therefore come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? What kingdom are they talking about? They're talking about Solomon's kingdom. They're talking about the, 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 the throne of David being set up on the planet Earth, because this is what all the prophecy was talking about. We're going to be restored. We're going to get our land back. OK, so they're asking him here. NLT. So when the apostles were with Yahweh Shai, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? OK, because ever since Solomon's sin, as we'll show you, eventually the United Kingdom of Israel was rent. It was split into two. That's why you have Judah and Ephraim. That's why you have northern and southern kingdom. Right. So what did Yahweh Shai say? He said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but you shall receive power and the Holy Spirit shall come upon you, starting in Acts the second chapter. And ye shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, amongst the circumcision, and then you will go into the uttermost parts of the earth, all right, which ultimately, boom, is talking about over here, all right, but they did go to the different regions and visit the Gentiles as well. Okay, that's where you get the Corinth, Thessalonians, and all of these. These are churches that were ultimately set up where these men were testifying, look, he rose again. You know, the, the, the you know, the, the bringing the whole fullness of the gospel out. They had to be witnesses, all right, and go and tell people of that resurrection. All right. We saw him. We were we were with him. You know, these were eyewitnesses. So they were like, look, you know, like we saw you ride. Like, are you going to restore the kingdom? He was like, nah, not yet. See, there were prophecies that had to be fulfilled. All right. Now they asked him this. In the fourth beast, right. In the fourth beast, the Roman Empire was ruling when they asked him this. Which again, these are these captivities that we are in, even this one we're in now, are a result of Solomon's fall. Going back to First Kings. Okay, let me get these out of here. We're done with that one. Keep that there. So again, you know, Solomon was, you know, he got that warning and promise in First Kings nine. Um, the Queen of Sheba came and then 1 Kings the 11th chapter Solomon turned from the Most High okay verse 11 1 Kings 4 11 and 4 and it came to pass when Solomon was old oh I know what I was reading I was reading 2 Thessalonians let me get that real quick 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter. I wanted to read this first. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, the kingdom ain't going to come, except there come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, which some men are saying, that's, this is talking about Apostle Tahar, like these niggas, niggas are creepy. All right, niggas are crazy. You have people that actually believed it. It was talking about Esau, Edom, because it would be through Esau's world, Esau's fall, that that kingdom of heaven, which would be established forever, would come. OK, so this word falling away. All right, which is apostasia. OK, they falling away, a defection and apostasy. All right, the Lord ultimately, you know, took the spirit away from Jake. He took his protection away from us because of our disobedience. All right, and then as you read here, 
all right, apostasy on, divorce, repudiation, a bill of divorce. So ultimately, the Lord had that temple to be decimated in 70 AD, and we were banished out of the land. Okay? This word, repudiation. Oh, no, not that. Yeah, rejection. Slokia. The word reputation, okay, uh, re rejection, renunciation, abandonment, forsaking. Okay, so the, this falling away started at 70 AD, in which from there we were, you know, scattered into, you know, different parts of, you know, Africa. All right, Europe, you know, but we weren't in the land anymore. All right, we were totally separated from our power. You had particular, you know, people, you know, who kept particular customs where we settled, but eventually there came a point, you know, once we were brought over here to the Americas in slavery, where it was all beat out of us. Okay? The Hebrew was beat out of us. We didn't know the name. We didn't understand why all of these things was happening to us until the Lord would send the Holy Spirit in the form of the prophets that would be raised up in around, you know, the 60s, which you had understandings of Israel before that. All right. But the gospel that we have now, which is leading to the end, started, you know, with a man by the name of Abba Bivens. All right. And then the, the, the men who labored under him. All right. And then eventually... All right, the old schools formed, and then, you know that got corrupted, just like the temple got corrupted, and then eventually, righteous men came from that. All right, the apostles and elders, who through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashimah Shai, okay, uh, through their preaching, through their labor, came a great awakening, and there were other men as well. Okay, but it's through this gospel, it's through this time that we're going to get the kingdom of heaven. So that falling away came, all right, 70 AD, all right, which let's go to Google. We'll just type in what happened in 70 AD. Okay, what happened? <laughs> However, in Judea, the campaign against the Jews continued under uh, Vespasian's son, Titus. Before that, you have Nero, all right? Because it it started before 70 AD. There was like different wars going on, okay? And the Romans destroyed the temple in Jerusalem and looted its sacred contents with the revolt over for good. Huge numbers of Jews left Judea to make home elsewhere. See? Now, how is this tied to Solomon's sin? Because... When we go to First Kings, the ninth chapter, the promise was to Solomon, if you don't keep my commandments, I'm going to cut Israel off from out of the land, which I have given them. Go on to First Kings, uh, the eleventh chapter. Solomon did that. Solomon did that, right? He, uh, when Solomon was old, his wives, verse 4, his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, all right, as was with his father David. David never bowed to the other gods. David's mind was right in that aspect. He didn't fall to his concubines or his wives. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites, Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, okay, and went not fully after the Lord as did David his father. Then Solomon built a high place for Shemash, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before the Lord. Before Jerusalem, the Lord built the abominations of the Moab. He built high places all right, so that they can do their sacrifices in, in evil. And he partook in these evils, which when you tell Israelites this, they get mad at you. I'm telling you the truth about what Solomon did. He got into left hand magic and evil. Yes, 
in masonry, he's known as one of the highest level witches that ever lived. He went off. He went he left. You think that what the Lord did to us it just came from a, a simple, uh, he just built it. You know, Solomon went off, man. We're here to tell you the whole truth. Okay? What are these nations into? They're into evil. They're into witchcraft. They're into demons. They're the, they, 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 they sacrifice children. Okay? And when you, when you go into the uh, chart of the kings, all right, after Solomon, all right, you had Rehoboam and Jeroboam. Rehoboam was Solomon's direct son. Jeroboam was one of his servants, okay, and they went off. The idol worship and evils that were established by Solomon, all right, Jeroboam especially, okay, because Rehoboam tried to repent, but Jeroboam forwarded all of that stuff, man. And if you look at the northern kingdom, okay, none of those kings did good. Okay, because again, the kingdom was rent in two. This is why you have the kingdom of Judah, which, you know, became Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. And then this is why you have the rest of the tribes. Okay? This is why we were split. All right? And this is what the disciples were asking the Lord. All right? Like, look, okay, are you going to reestablish what was divided? Are you going to unite Judah and Israel back together and, and set up the kingdom now? That wasn't the time for it. And again, going back here, Solomon did that evil. Okay, he went off. All right, verse 9, And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice. And had commanded him concerning this thing that he should not go after other gods. But he kept that not which the Lord commanded. All right. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, for as much as I has done this and have not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee and give it to thy servant. All right. Which that goes into Jeroboam. And then immediately. Okay. Immediately, as you read, God raises adversaries. The Lord stirred up an adversary unto Solomon, Hadad, the Edomite. He was of the king's seed in Edom. Now, these are the nations in which David subdued. So what happened is the nations that David subdued, you know, the Ammonites, the Edomites, okay, the uh, Hamite tribes, you know, the Hittites and the uh what's them the, the the all of the ites the philistines all of these nations which were subdued the lord okay up you know pretty much raised them up to put hell and to start wars with solomon in his kingdom pretty much so pretty much the 40 years of of peace ended all right and as you keep reading all right, the, the, the Lord, uh, the, basically that peace was over. Okay. And then ultimately, the kingdom would eventually be split between Rehoboam and Jeroboam. Okay. And we're going to get into that history more, you know, in another lesson. But I'm just giving you the overall right here. Okay. And it goes, like, let's see here. Yeah, the, the prophet Ahijah came up to Jeroboam and said he basically rent his, he rent his uh, garment in 12 pieces and told him, take 10 pieces for thus said the Lord God of Israel. Behold, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon and give, give the 10 tribes unto thee. All right. But he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake, for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen. And why did he, why did this happen? 
Why did the kingdom get rent? Why did we get split up? Because they have forsaken me and have worshipped Ashtoreth. This is what Solomon did. The goddess of the Zidonians. Okay. He worshipped those gods. Jake, we worship those gods. Jake, when you look at what these kings were doing, it wasn't no uh, uh, low-level thing. Like They were doing child sacrifice. You don't believe me? As a matter of fact, let's go to this chart here. And let's look up Ahaz, which was, uh, I believe, the father of Hezekiah, right? When you look him up, let's go to what he did, this is the type of stuff that the kings of Judah was doing. So just like after the fall of Adam, okay, you had particular righteous men who, who, who you know, stood for righteousness, Noah, Shem, you know, our facts, you, you, you know, but... Other niggas was just going off. The same thing happened after Solomon's fall. Look, look at all of this is the when you look at this side, this is the kings of Judah. Okay. And of the let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Of the 19, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2 did okay. <laughs> All right, 5, 6. Only 6 did right. The last one being Josiah. Okay? The rest did evil, or two of them, you know, King Amaziah, Joash. All right, which you can get into those stories. Because uh, Amaziah, he, 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 he was putting hell on those Edomites, but then he eventually worshiped their gods, but they did right in youth, but did evil in old age. So, and then when you deal with the, the, the Northern Kingdom, all right, none of them did right. Jehu did okay. But when you look at Ahaz, let's just click on him to show you the depth of what, J what, what Jake was doing. Okay. King Ahaz devoted himself to pagan worship, okay, and its associated evil, touring the nation, building shrines, all right, the same thing Solomon was doing, and seeking the aid of every powerless religion he knew of. He even sacrificed his own sons, burning them alive in a ritual to the idol Molech, okay? And that's in 2 Kings, the 17th chapter, or 2 Kings, the 16th chapter. 2 Kings 16 and 2, 20 years old was Ahaz when he began to reign and reigned 16 years in Jerusalem and did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord his God like his father, but walked in the way of the kings of Israel who started that all. Who, who started to introduce these practices into Israel? Solomon. Right? And then uh, uh, Jeroboam, his servant, went all the way in. Basically, he introduced a whole other priesthood. So he was completely gone. Rehoboam went off too, but then eventually, as you go through the history, which would lead to these four beasts, Daniel prophesies of, okay, Jake was just catching hell. We lost our peace. Okay? It says, But he walked in the way of the kings of Israel and made his son to pass through the fire, according to the abominations of the heathen who the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. So again, these kings weren't doing no just regular everyday wickedness. They were going in. See, this is why we suffered this great fall, man. And again, what we're showing you is this started with Solomon. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it made his son to pass through the fire, sacrificed his own son to a ritual. All right. That is tied to a guy named Molech. 
Okay? And when you read about Ahaz, when he died, he slept with his fathers. Okay? He went to the spiritual realm. All right? He didn't go to hell. All right? He went into the spiritual realm. All right? Just like the righteous went. Okay? So, going back here. So, basically, when you read this, the Lord ultimately sent a prophet Ahijah to tell Jeroboam all right that I'm getting ready to split you know Solomon's kingdom all right and that's that happened okay um and then there's another story you can read all right but ultimately here's the point Jeroboam eventually went off. First Kings 4 and 7, 14 and 7. Go tell Jeroboam. Okay. Thus said the Lord God of Israel, for as much have I as have I as exalted thee among the people, and made thee prince over my people Israel, and rent the kingdom away from the house of David, and gave it to thee, yet thou hast not been as my servant David, who kept my commandments, and who followed me with all his heart to do that which was right in mine eyes, but has done evil. All right, above all that were before thee, thou hast gone and made the other gods and molten images and provoked me to anger and hast cast me behind thy back. Therefore, I will bring evil upon the house of Jeroboam and I will cut off from Jeroboam him that pisseth against the wall. All right, basically, he, he, he destroyed Jeroboam, his sons, and I will shut it up that is left in Israel and take away the remnant of the house of Jeroboam as a man taketh away dung till it be all gone. All right. And him that dieth of Jeroboam shall the dogs eat. So ultimately, Rehoboam went off too. And we bring it up Rehoboam and Jeroboam because according to this chart, all right, these are the first two to rule, all right, as the kingdom was split. So from Solomon, after that 40 years of peace, he went off. You have Rehoboam who ruled over Judah and then Jeroboam. And then we know none of the kings of uh, Israel, the northern kingdom, did right. Okay. But as you go through this history, all right, there were particular men who would come, okay, as Asa, okay, and what was Asa known for? He, he, he slew all of the Sodomites out of the land. Okay? So as we still had, you know, um, particular regions in the, in the promised land, we weren't together. Okay? That's where you get northern and southern kingdom. Okay? Because the promised land, let's go here. Let's see if we can bring this map up. you see here it's got a bonnet on you see this shit anyway <laughs> um the land that was given unto judah benjamin and levi was you know um least than what was given unto the northern kingdom so the northern kingdom pretty much took the land here and then you know judah benjamin and levi you know had a lesser portion so that's where you get the northern and southern kingdom, you know, aspect, because we were divided, we were split. And when we split, you know, the northern kingdom went north, ruled over by uh, uh, Jeroboam, the southern kingdom, all right, stayed in the region of Jerusalem and in the southern region, all right. And from there, all right, different kings did right you have uh asa okay um when you read about him he was righteous okay he was righteous all right and but if you look at it we were at war so you can look him up we ain't gonna get I, i'll get more into that in another lesson but you know asa you know jehoshaphat they both did right. Then came 
Jehoram, Ahiza. And during these times, we were at war with these different nations who ultimately, you know, were trying to take us down because they remember what David did. You know, they remember Solomon's kingdom where they were down. So they were like, man, the Lord just allowed Jake to be overcome, but he would leave certain righteous men. Okay, so the time that we went into this, uh, as you go to Daniel, the fourth chapter, just to bring it all home, these four beasts, all right, or four different captivities the, 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 that the Israelites will be scattered amongst, you know, reigning from ultimately starting at Solomon's fall. The first was like a lion and it had eagle's wings. All right, and that's the uh, Assyrian Babylonian Empire. That came, all right, around the time that Ahaz, as we showed you, who was gotten to child sacrifice, all right, and King Hezekiah, okay? On the uh, north side, the northern kingdom, okay, you had King Hosea. All right, which he, he was he was going off. All right. As a matter of fact. So the Assyrian captivity started around. All right. The time of Hezekiah. All right. And Hosea. All right. And eventually the northern kingdom. OK. Went to the Americas. OK. But. On the, 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 the south side. You had Hezekiah, which he did right. So the Lord had mercy on Judah, okay, for a while. But eventually, we went into the Babylonian captivity because Jake just kept going off, man. But as you see, the final, you know, king on that set, you know, that ruled over the northern kingdom was Hosea. All right, Hosea, the 19th and last king of the separated kingdom of Israel, murdered his predecessor and seized the throne in the wake of military failures against the invading Assyrian army. His nine-year reign is characterized as evil, the only significant event of his reign, but a supremely uh, significant one, was the destruction of the kingdom. Hosea rebelled against the Assyrians to whom he was obliged to pay tribute and taxes upon his uh, default Assyria led a siege to the capital of Samaria to siege. The siege lasted three summers. At its end, Samaria fell. The population was deported to Assyria and foreign peoples all right, were uh, resettled into the Samaria. The kingdom of Israel had come to its end. There you go. And you can read about that in 2 Kings, the 17th chapter. Okay. And again, this all stems from Solomon's fall. This is what I'm showing you. Okay. Second Kings 17 and 6. In the ninth year of Hosea, the king of Assyria, all right, took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria and placed them in Hala and by Habor, by the river of Gozan and in the cities of the Medes. Why Israel fell? Why did Israel fall? For so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God, which brought them forth out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and feared other gods and walked in the statues of the heathen, whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel and of the kings of Israel, which they had made. And the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against the Lord their God, and they built them high places in all their cities from the tower of the watchmen to the fence cities and set them up images and groves in every high hill under every green tree and burnt incenses in the high places as did the heathen whom the Lord carried away from before them. Okay, going back to the time of what David did. Okay, he took these heathen down and wrought wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger. They served idols, wherefore the Lord have said unto them, Ye shall not do this thing. Okay? Yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah by all the prophets and by all 
the seers, saying, Turn ye from your evil ways, and keep my commandments and my statutes, according to all the law which I have commanded your fathers, all right, and which I sent unto you my servants the prophets. Notwithstanding, they would not hear, but harden their necks, like unto the necks of their fathers, that they did not believe in the Lord their God, and they rejected his statues and his covenant made with, made with their fathers and their testimonies. And they followed vanity and became vain and went after the heathen that were round about them, concerning whom the Lord have charged that they should not do like them. Okay? And left all the commandments of the Lord their God and made them molten images of two calves and made a grove and worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served by all and caused their sons and daughters to pass through the fire and use divination and enchantments. So not only did Solomon get into the divinations and enchantments, which is witchcraft. You got a group of weirdos saying, Yo, Yahshua said Solomon got into witchcraft. Where that's at in the Bible? Well, not only did he, the, 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 a lot of the kings did. They used divination and enchantments and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Therefore, the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. And there was none left but the tribe of Judah only. All right. Which eventually it would be Judah, Benjamin and Levi. All right. And also Judah kept not the commandments of the Lord. Now under King Hezekiah. As we go back to this chart under King Hezekiah. You know, Judah did do right. They were, you know, they were, you know, they were being faithful. They were following. But eventually here came Manasseh, which is where you get the prayer of Manasseh. He went all the way off. He went completely off. But he repented. All right. Amon. All right. And then eventually you have King Josiah, which he did right. All right. But the way he went out was like, damn. All right. And then from there, you have particulars who sat on the throne of David. But it was all orchestrated by, all right, the... Uh, you know, Babylonians, the Egyptians were ultimately using particular puppet leaders that they set up. OK, like uh, 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 Jehoiakim. OK. Which his real name was Eliakim, but I believe Pharaoh Nico changed his name to, you know, Jehoiakim, which is Yahweh. He put Yahweh in his name to basically act as if. It was the Lord who was setting up this ruler, but it was really the heathen who set him up. Okay? And from there, Jehoiakim, all right, uh, Zedekiah, and they all went off. Okay? They, 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 they went off. Okay? But again, what this led to was the beginning of our captivities. Okay? which ultimately these are these four beasts okay these four beasts that were diverse from one another the first was like a lion and it had eagle's wings and i beheld to the the, the wings were plucked and lifted up from the earth all right so this is speaking of the assyrian babylonian empire which you know i have this website here which is a good website the assyrian captivity 200 years you can read about it all right in jeremiah which is more of the babylonian aspect but assyria and babylon is pretty much the same region okay and the, certain of these events were happening you know the, the, you eventually because the northern kingdom went into the assyrian captivity and eventually they left all right and then the, the southern kingdom went into the Babylonian captivity. Okay. So. This aspect is more of Babylon dealing with Jeremiah. You know, uh, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel. All right. But, you know, it was the Assyrian Babylonian Empire. Okay. And who came next was Babylon. There you go. It begins with wars upon Israel and Judah. Of all the times of Israel, the seventh exile and scattering 
is probably the saddest. Okay? We have seen the kingdom divided, and that was sad, but worse still, we now see the beginning of, of the captivities. There you go. As the larger kingdom, Israel, falls to Assyria and its people are taken away to foreign lands. Okay? When Assyria was a world power, Israel was captured and his people exiled northward of the area whence Abraham had come so long ago. Hezekiah was then the king of Judah, a good king who listened to Isaiah, all right, because the prophets were sent and the kings were supposed to listen to them. God's prophets. So the kingdom of Judah was spared. Only Israel, the ten tribes, were taken. But when the Babylonians came to dominate the world, Honiah, all right, which was Jeconiah, was the king of Judah, and he's right here. Okay? And he went off. Okay? He went completely off. And he was called out by Jeremiah, I believe, in Jeremiah, the 22nd chapter. All right? But ultimately, um, he was set up by uh, Nebuchadnezzar. Okay, Nebuchadnezzar thought, you know, ultimately, you know, Hananiah was going to do what was right, you know, because Jeremiah was telling Jake, nigga, you got to submit. We got to go through this captivity. All right, but Jake was like, you know, we're going to rebel. We ain't going to do this. We ain't going to do that. And it, eventually, it led to the Lord as we're reading here. Okay, it says, let's read it again. Hezekiah was then the king of Judah, you know, when... The northern kingdom was taken captive by the Assyrians. A good king who listened to Isaiah, God's prophet, so the kingdom of Judah was spared and only Israel, the ten tribes, were taken. But then, but, but when the Babylonians came to dominate the world, again, that first beast was the Assyrian Babylonian Empire. Coniah was the king of Judah. He was evil so it was judah's turn to be conquered the people were exiled in babylon jerusalem and his temple were destroyed okay <laughs> which we rebuilt at the time of the uh we returned to jerusalem and rebuilt it at the time of the uh second beast all right which is ultimately the uh medes and the persians uh, the the king Honiah or Jeconiah, all right, um, became like a shattered jar as Jeremiah had prophesied. See, Jeremiah was prophesying against these wicked rulers, and none of Honiah's descendants would reign anymore on David's throne in Judah. All right, which you have people saying, see, there's not going to be any ruler on the throne. Well, it was promised that Yahweh Shai was going to rule on that throne by Nathan the prophet to David as a covenant that can't be broken but no you know none of Honiah's descendants okay would sit on the throne I believe Zedekiah sat on it for a minute after that which was he wasn't the son of uh, Honiah he was the son of Josiah the last righteous king but even he went off and eventually as you read in prophecy, you know, we would go into these different captivities. Okay, it started with the Assyrian, Babylonian Empire, the Medes, the Persians, the Greeks. Okay, we no longer had kings at the time of the Medes and Persians, but Zerubbabel was the governor. See, and he's in the royal lineage of David, he's in Yahweh Shai lineage. But that's a whole nother story for another time. There's a lot of history, of course, but we're just showing you how this all stems from, you know, you had David, Solomon, all right, Rehoboam and Jeroboam. And then that's the split that led eventually to the Assyrian captivity, which was the beginning of these four beasts. Then you had the Medes and the Persians. All right. After the Assyrian Babylonian Empire, then you had the Greeks. Okay, the leopard, and then you had the Romans, the fourth beast, 
All right. And then there's another little horn. All right. Who ultimately, as you, as you read, that's going to be the kingdom that's going to be ruling at the time Yahweh Shai returns. That's the revival of Rome. Okay. And they were slated to speak great words against the Most High, wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times, laws. All right. And ultimately, we will be given into their hand. That's this captivity, which is also a result, all right, of Solomon's sin, all right? Again, it began with the Assyrian Babylonian Empire, which came around the time of Hosea, okay, and Hezekiah, all right? And ultimately, that started the Assyrian Captivity eventually Judah went into the Babylonian captivity. All right, and that started Okay, these various captivities that we are were in and are are in until this day Okay, so what we will discuss um, In another lesson is you know certain intricacies and certain happenings you know which led to the split and certain politics and things that were happening between Judah and Israel. In this lesson, I just wanted to establish, you know, that um, point, you know, the brother wanted me to expound upon. Hopefully, it was edifying. Um, see, I think that's pretty much it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Jake kept going off, Micah 3 and 11. The heads thereof judge for reward and the priests thereof teach for hire. And the prophets thereof divine for money, yet will they lean upon Yahweh and say, Is not Yahweh amongst us? None, no evil can come upon us. Therefore, Zion, for your sake, shall be plowed as a field, and Jerusalem shall become heaps, and the mountain of the house, all right, as the high place of the forest. So ultimately, we know that um, in the uh, Babylonian captivity, they attacked the temple, okay? And, you know, we and sacked it and the Edomites helped. And then eventually, you know, at the time of the Medes and the Persians, we rebuilt the temple. All right. At the time of the Greeks. All right. What you go into the Maccabees, they we was fighting back and forth with the, you know, the Edomites, you know, over the temple. You know, we won a few wars under the Maccabees. All right. And then, you know, at the time of the fourth beast. All right. Was where we were totally kicked out of the land. All right. And scattered, you know, throughout, you know, Africa and various different places. 70 AD. You know, leading up to our final captivity, which is this little horn. All right. Known as Babylon the Great. OK. So we we are still in captivity until this day suffering all right because of the sin not only of adam all right but also the sin of solomon which is why yahweh shai's sacrifice is so important because it guarantees us you know not only redemption from this flesh that came from the fall of adam but redemption from literal captivity all right which came from the you know solomon's fall so in its simplest form, which is more we could have went into, that's what I mean when I say that. And hopefully I will edify it on to the next. Shalom.